This video is for anyone buying a used Nissan Leaf and you're trying to decide between a new Leaf, which is this one, and the old Leaf. I know they're a little out of focus here. I'm gonna walk through all the different things between these two cars, how they compare, how they're similar, how they're different. Things I like, things I don't like. Between my 2013 Nissan Leaf and my 2019 Nissan Leaf. I've had this one for about five years. This one for about one, well, about six months. There's three different trim levels of the S, SV, and SL. S is the base, SV is like the mid-grade, and then SL is like the, the nice one with leather and a Bose sound system and all that. Actually, here comes the Leaf down the road now. It's a newer one, a 22 or so. These ones are loud, just rolling. If you could hear that, it's kind of loud. The 2019 isn't loud like that, neither is the 13. If we're talking price of these two cars, hey buckets. Okay, this, this car, this ran from 2011 to 2017. And uh, you can get these cars for about five or six or seven or eight thousand dollars, depending on the trim level, battery condition, mileage, all that. I got this car four years ago for six thousand five hundred dollars. It's still about, it's probably worth fifty five hundred dollars now. It's a 2013, like I said. Now it's got about sixty thousand miles on it. Actually, it's had very, it's had almost no bat battery degradation. So, still in good shape. It's still worth quite a bit of money. Okay, so these newer cars here. Um, you can pick these up for in the teens. Uh, I've seen some as though, as cheap as like thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars, and they go up to depends on the battery. If you're getting the big battery, which is the sixty kilowatt hour, those are kind of in the low twenties. I think it can be summed up by like this rear arch here. We got this kind of straight line here, and then on the back, this one, it's very round. If you go to the headlights. This one looks like a bug, a lot of people say. And this one has more of the square headlight going on there. The only thing I wish this thing had, uh, daytime running lights, it looks like there's a spot for them, but they actually don't come on in the SV, which is a bummer. I think you only got it in the SL in 2019. I'm not sure how that's changed, but that's really like my only complaint, major complaint of this car is no daytime running lights. It's just a nice safety thing. The taillights are pretty pretty different on these two cars. And actually I prefer this one because it just went up higher up the back of the car and you got more, um, it's just more visible. So I think that was kind of a cool design. If we're talking about doors, door entry is the same. You can walk up to either one of these cars. If the key's in your pocket, you just hit this little button here and it'll unlock the car. That's the same on both of these cars. Let's look at charging ports on these two cars. Starting with the first generation car. You can see we have, uh, this is the J1772. This is like your level one, level two plug. And then this is your Chatamo DC fast charge. So that's what this one's got. This has got like a bigger door for some reason. But it's the same thing. Level one and two and DC fast charge. One thing of note here, this car does not have CCS, which most newer cars do. That's kind of hurting the Nissan Leaf, I'd say, right now. Um, because you can't really road trip this car. Uh, we took it about 90 miles down to Colorado Springs, and it did fine. You know, this car has 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you're plugging this into your 110 outlet at home, this is going to be you know, 12 hour charge, something like that. If it's totally empty, maybe a little bit more. This car is gonna be more than that. It's gonna be more like 18 to 20 hours, just because the battery pack's bigger. What's up, Bucket? Um, so, you know, but that's because you can go further with this one. 150 mile range, about 80 mile range with this one. Let's look at the interior of these two cars. Let's we'll start with the old one. Okay, let's power this thing on. All right, interior design of these cars is pretty different. You can see everything's round. I like this, it's got the mile per hour up here. That's really nice. And then, you know, in terms of display, shows you your charge here. That's these bars. This is lifetime battery health. Done a video about that, I'll put a link to. 
um, you know, if you're buying one of these cars, how to check the battery health. On this first generation car, it's right here. I have one, two, you include the two red bars, and then 10 total. So eight of these white bars, two of these red bars. So I have 10 bars of battery health in this car. When it was new, it had 12. So there's been a little bit of degradation, but in terms of readout, it's cool when you're using the power, it goes this way, and when you're regenerating power, you know, you're braking, it's shown here. All right, let's toggle through some menus to come over here, and you see there's a button here. So there's nothing on the steering wheel to do this. So you hit this button here. You can set your charge percentage. You can do 100 or 80%. There's charging timer, climate control timer, start heating the car or cooling the car at a certain set time if you go to work at the same time every day. So there's some menus in here, nothing fancy. This is a helpful menu. It'll tell you your time um, to fully charge the car. Miles per kilowatt hour, so how efficient the car is. This is kind of like miles per gallon. Now, one of my favorite things about this car is the climate control. It has a whole separate, you know, it's, it's super simple. We have, there's a knob, you know, to turn the fan up. Great. Every, there's a button for everything, rear to frost, you know, your windshield to frost, recirculation, mode. You know, it's super simple. It's so simple that like, when I'm driving this car, I don't even have to really look over here. I can be driving and kind of do this stuff from memory, right? Just hit the thing, turn it off. So I love that. The sound system in this base model is basic. There's no navigation. You know, it does have the voice, the hands-free. Um, you know, you can do all that stuff with this car, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if it'll focus, but you have like the phone controls and stuff. In 2013, this thing had heated seats, front and rear. That's amazing. You know, there's, there's a drive mode and an eco mode. That's it. There's no B mode and there's no one pedal driving. I like that there's buttons for everything, right? Heated steering wheel, which is, you get that on the S in 2013. I think they did away with it in 14 and 15. Um, there's features like you can lock the charging and all that. So I love this. It's super simple. Um, dash layout. Easy peasy. Okay, let's get in the other car. All right, you can see already that the squareness of the outside translates to the inside. Let's turn this thing on. It's got this cool graphic that comes up. Everything's more square. Got the square thing going on here. Now, like I said, climate control has buttons down here, but everything is done through this screen. So if I turn it on, which one thing I don't like is this on button's kind of small. Like I can't, it's hard to hit this while I'm driving and actually get my hand on it. So I turn it on, my climate control stuff is up here. Um, okay. So, you know, there's still buttons. Uh, but in terms of, you know, I've just found that this is a little bit harder to use. Like if I want to turn the heat on, okay, heat on, I gotta, you know, I have to hit this button up. And the other one is just a dial. You know, I could crank it all the way up really fast. So it's a little bit more cumbersome. Um, but that's fine. Still has heated front and rear seats. We got cup holders here, which is nice. This center console is pretty much the same. No heated rear seats in this car. The buttons were here on the other car. And this is an SV. Okay, this has got more stuff going on. There's menus for days on this car compared to the other one. All right, so we start at the compass. We got one, two, three, four, five menus, five different displays. Okay, so here is shows our range based on 77% battery. I can go down now with the steering wheel. I'm using these buttons on the steering wheel. Down. So we got battery temperature. And actually, this is battery capacity. So this is battery health. So this car has almost 67,000 miles on it and it's showing full battery. So the degradation on this car has been pretty much zero, which is awesome. What else do you get? You get all this customization in here, um, which is really nice. There is a driver assistance. This thing does have adaptive cruise and it does have a camera in the front. So if you're about to hit something, it will stop for you if you want it to. You can turn that on and off in here. 
Let's toggle through. This is really cool. It'll show you the pressure in all the tires. I don't know why it's not doing it right now. So you can kind of customize how this works. You know, when you do adaptive cruise, you can set the distance if you want to be close to the person in front of you or more far, which is nice. Um, I've gotten used to this car. Um, it was kind of an adjustment coming from the coming from the first car. Um, this is supposed to have Cap Apple CarPlay, the SV, but we can't really get it to work. Um, you know, we use the cable. Actually, the Bluetooth in here works really well. And also, like, hands-free calling works really well. One complaint I've had about this is that when you try and... When I've tried to control the volume of a song, for some reason hitting the down button or the up button sometimes changes the track. Maybe it's because these buttons are too close together, the electronics inside the steering wheel or something. I don't know. Okay, so really that's about it. You know, there's a lot more stuff going on in the dash um, and the design is different, but overall it's the same. Like the doors are exactly the same in both cars. You know, the space is about the same in both cars. You can see what this car is used for, hauling kids. And it's messy, you know, bag of chips. Okay, so that's the inside of this car. What else is next? What's on the list? Range. This car, like you can see, it has 77% charge and it says it'll go about 112 miles. So this is telling us, okay, 112 miles of range. So I will say this, in this car, I don't really worry about range nearly as much as the old car. You know, 80 miles in the old car, like range is always on your mind. In this car, you know, not really at all. If it's, you know, 50% or above, we can pretty much go anywhere we want without thinking about range. So that's been really nice in this bigger battery car. Um, you know, range anxiety is less of a thing in the newer car. And I'm guessing, you know, like I said, this is the small battery pack for the newer generation, if you got the 60 kilowatt hour, that, that's supposed to have a range of 220 miles. So I bet you would think about it even less, which would be really nice. Okay, this is fun. We're comparing these two cars. What else? I will say this in the new car, the navigation does need updating. If you use the navigation here, you know, uh, and you go plug in something, if that can be, uh, you know, I, I've had times where I put in a destination and I, I don't know, if, you may need to update this thing or whatever. My current navigation is outdated because it was taking me through construction and, and roads that did not exist anymore. So I just use Google Maps on my phone most of the time. I'm sure that's better in the newer Leafs. Drive mode, B, it has the drive, regular drive mode and the B mode. It's also got eco mode and it has e-pedal. So the e-pedal is the one, one pedal driving. This was only offered on 2018 and newer Leafs heating like if it's really cold outside this car's defroster and heat can get much warmer like i we don't get cold in this car whereas on a cold cold day in the black car it's like the heat it doesn't have enough output it, it struggles to keep up so if you come out and you have a icy windshield you know it's going to defrost a lot quicker with this new car this car does drive really really nice um you know, and part of the reason it is, is because it's got the bigger battery. It's about 200 pounds heavier. And so it feels just a little bit more planted. And um, yeah, just it just feels like a heavier car. This car, you know, it's light. I think it's 3,300 pounds and about 3,500 pounds. And so um, it feels a little bit more nimble, a little bit lighter, which is kind of fun, you know, if you like going around corners quick and you know, they, they both feel really nimble, but this one feels more nimble. Um, this car, the newer car, less road noise. It's a much more refined car than the first generation car. So you can have conversations a lot easier or talk on the phone in this car, way better than this one. Every time I drive this car, I'm like, I can't believe how smooth this car drives. I won't say it drives like a three series, but because it's heavier, it does have that feel, which is so nice. We talked about safety. This one has the front camera in it, so it can avoid hitting something in front of it if that were to happen. Actually, my girlfriend was looking down and traffic stopped, and you know, in the first month of having this car, it, it saved us. This does not have any of that stuff. On the higher trim levels, you know, the SL, 
and there was a tech package for the SV. It was an add-on. You could get, well, it would come with daytime running lights, but it would also come with lane assist. So um, it could kind of drive itself, which is cool. All right, let's talk about durability real quick. Both cars have about 65,000 miles on them, and they are holding up incredibly well. I haven't, you know, I've had this car almost five years. I've only put wiper blades on it and tires. Um, this car actually has more miles than the older one, 67,000 miles, about 64,000 miles. And neither one of them has had any major issue. And not only that, there's no squeaks or rattles in either car, in the, in the suspension or the steering or anything like that. So I've been super impressed with the durability of both cars. What would I do if I were you? I would probably get this car because, you know, if you use the rebates and the, you know, this, like I said, this car was $13,000, but we got it for six because we got 4,000 back from Federal and 3,000 back from Excel Energy on a local rebate program. So this car was actually cost me as much as this one. So, and you know, like I said, I just, I love how quiet, refined the ride is in this car and you don't have to worry about range as much. Um, it's a big step up. So I would get the new car, but you can get these for cheap and you don't have to worry about the federal rebate and all that stuff. So kind of up to you, your financial situation, but um, both cars are awesome. Like I hesitate to get rid of this car because I love it. I love it. Like I call it the work truck because I just run around town in it and, you know, go to Home Depot, throw lumber in it, all that good stuff. So um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful in deciding if you're going to get a first generation car or a second generation car. And if it is, consider subscribing and liking the video. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.